We're in a Porsche, it has a turbo, and guess what? It's really fast. Welcome to the Porsche Panamera Sport Turismo. Now let's not beat around the bush when this thing first launched, who thought direct competitor to the RS6? And finally. So the concept car of this was launched, I think it was like 2012? It's been around for a long time. When that thing dropped, I thought, good God, it looks monumentally beautiful. When is the day that that thing is gonna arrive so I can A, drive it, and B, compare it to an RS6? And here we are, now it's been out for a few months. I'm just gonna start with it straight away. On paper, these cars, the RS6 performance and this, on paper at least, are relentlessly similar. So let's just go through it. Four liter, twin turbocharged, V8, four wheel drive, eight speed gearbox, I mean, it's ridiculous. Those things fit both cars. Now, in the performance stakes, here are the differences. Panamera Sport Turismo Turbo, 550 horsepower, and around about 565 pounds-feet of torque. RS6 Performance, 605 horsepower, and 553 pounds-feet of torque. There is one thing to address. While the numbers are currently in favor of the RS6, it is the performance version, and we are in the turbo version of the Sports Turismo. Porsche have launched a Turbo S version, which is also a hybrid, which has quite a lot more torque, and it is also up in the 600 plus horsepower range. But the reason that I'm comparing these two cars is because of those stats that I have just presented, which are remarkably similar. But of course, on paper is one thing, the way that the nuts and bolts of these two cars are screwed together add up to entirely different experiences in themselves. And the first thing I have to say is, while I've always found the RS6 to be catastrophically fast for the kind of car it is, this is a Porsche and this is a turbo and this is mated to their marvelous twin clutch gearbox. Even though they're both eight speeds, check this out. Good God. Savagery, monumental savagery. It's the way those numbers are applied. Despite the fact they are both unbelievably similar, these guys are applying it in such a way that the, it's the way that the torque is available immediately low down. The acceleration is relentless, but linear and completely progressive all the way up to that top of the very rev range. It's a beautiful environment in which to witness that. Now let's talk about environment. So I wanna basically provide you information that you can't Google. Now we've gone through the stats, but how do they feel? How do they compare to drive? Well, there's something about being in a Porsche. They very much, even in like Grand Tourers like this, they very much have their own feel about them. I gotta say the way this thing handles and turns in, it just feels like a Porsche. I mean, there's no other way of saying it. I think the biggest difference being in the two cars, and actually the number one thing which has surprised me, is the size differences. Now you don't exactly look at an RS6 and think compact, but it took me by surprise how big this car feels. It is very wide uh, and it's very long too. When you park the two cars next to each other, the size differences. This thing looks huge. It's the length of it and the width of it. And even on the road when you're driving, it feels a very chunky car. Now that's only not only just because of its size, just the way this thing feels in the hands, as it were. It does feel a seriously well bolted together piece of kit. And I would say the word for it, it's chunky. It's quality, but it's chunky. And just when you've got it in your hands, you really do feel a little bit more as one with the car, despite the fact that it is such a big vehicle. Now, interestingly, my RS6 and the interior of this car are very similar. They're both this sort of ivory, lighter shade of gray interior. And I think that's actually made it for a really interesting comparison because again, to the eyes, they may look similar, but when you're in here, again, it's a Porsche. So I always thought that the interior of Audis and let's not do it a disservice. The market position of the RS6, my particular car is coming in well spec, around about 120 grand. The spec of this car is coming in at just under 160,000 pounds. <laughs> now, it's got a lot of options on it. The interior being one, the extended Alcantara on the roof line here, just like the RS6. 
this beautiful ivory interior, just like the RS6. To the eye at first, they look very similar, but I have to say it's such a plush environment. And this is the intangible things that you can't Google, the things that you can't sort of appreciate on paper that I'm hopefully able to explain to you that while there is basically a 40 grand price jump in these two cars, I guess the thing that justifies that is the quality and the ambience. Now, aesthetically, I've got to say, when they launched the concept of the Sport Turismo, I was like, take my money. This thing looks fantastic. I've always felt the standard Panamera to be a little bit of a frumpy, bubbly, I don't know, almost disproportionate car. The Sport Turismo has definitely addressed a good chunk of that thing looking a bit weird. But I have to say, now that this thing is now on the road, it still doesn't, to my eyes, look as good as I was hoping it was going to. The RS6 has always had this sort of angry, chunky feel about it. And when I've been following it during this filming, to my eyes anyway, aesthetics are very subjective and very personal. But I just find the RS6 has a more boisterous demeanor than this. This has a sort of, uh, I would say, more elegant quality about it. And aesthetically on the outside, at least, it doesn't always do it for me. When I'm on the inside, and this is where I think the two cars differ. When I'm driving the RS6, it sort of encourages me to grab it by the scruff of its neck and exploit its capabilities and unlock that engine tone. I would say that because I upgraded the exhaust system on the RS6, we had the uh, titanium Akrapovich exhaust system fitted to it. It does encourage you to open up its vocal cords and explore that range of performance that the car offers. The interesting thing about this car, despite the fact that it is the turbo variant, it's got that wonderful eight-speed twin clutch gearbox, it's as good going slow as it is going fast. And honestly, in the few days that I've been living with this car, I've enjoyed going slow in it as much as I have going fast. Does that mean, therefore, that maybe you'd be just as comfortable in this if you had the diesel version? Well, when you twist this little knob here and put it into Sport Plus, there is this aura of dynamic ability that comes through the chassis. You feel it stiffen up and you want to unleash all 550 <laughs> very responsive ponies. And check out this going in third gear now, long straight, surge, surges, <laughs> yes, we need to slow down now, very quickly we are in the realms of unacceptable, <laughs> but the way it does it, as I'm sure you can hear, is more limousine-esque in comparison to the RS6, speaking of which, let's jump in the other one and compare them and see how they feel. you can tell the biggest difference is the sound yeah now, don't, now of course I have upgraded the exhaust on this car but I've got to be honest with you the Akrapovich exhaust system it isn't mental it's not like a really shouty barky exhaust it has just really more cleared the throat of the RS6 just so you can hear and be reminded that you're in something a bit spicy it wasn't vastly different to the standard exhaust system. I think it's important to state that because the audible delight that is the RS6 comes through even from stock, even from a factory car. Of course it is louder now in this state, but compared with the stock Panamera Sport Turismo, that thing really is in limousine mode in comparison to the way this car sounds. So the first thing that hits you is the sound. Yes, we have an augmented exhaust, but honestly, I remember what this thing sounded like before that, and it still has these pops and bangs. It still gets those, even it still gets those, even with a standard exhaust system. So, second thing, acceleration. I've gotta say, I think the Porsche takes it. I think the Porsche is just a little bit quicker. Or the way that it delivers the torque because it's actually under acceleration it's often the torque that you feel in your body whatever it is because on paper as I mentioned 
the official st statistics are that they're near identical. But I think it's the way that the Porsche delivers the torque from a much earlier stage in the rev range than this car. This kind of comes into its own around about three and a half thousand onwards. Yes, so from there, it's all there. And the third thing, <laughs> the third thing is the size. Now, never in a million years did I believe that I would find myself saying the RS6 feels a little bit small. Now, in its own state, it doesn't feel small when you're in it, but when you jump back to back from the Sport Turismo into this, there is a definite downsizing effect. I think it's the, mostly the width of the Panamera, and it's long as well. And the other thing, it's one more time, Yeah, after a few of these flat out runs, I'm pretty confident that the Porsche feels quicker. Once again, whether it is or not, we'll have to do a drag race one day. Unfortunately, I don't have an empty runway to myself right now. Uh, but I've got to tell you, the sort of things that you can't Google, you want to know what this really feels like? I truly believe the Porsche feels faster. Having said that, the sense of occasion upon planting your foot, I think is definitely greater in the RS6. <laughs> I gotta say that this thing is still crazy. <laughs> and that for me is where it's at. These things are kind of unnecessary cars. I mean, who needs a car that's this practical, that's this fast? It really does tick both boxes at the same time. I've always said that the RS6 is one of those cars that pretty much ticks the most boxes. If you could have one car, this would be such a strong contender for what that single car would be. And now that the Porsche is in this space with the Sport Turismo, I think that as well is absolutely a car that you would consider if you wanted to tick the most boxes. If you wanted something that was gonna be ballistically fast, but great for carrying the dog, shopping, kids and the wife, both of these cars, their, their breadth of ability is astonishing. Now, going back to the size of these cars, when I stepped in this thing, before I even turned it on, I was aware that this car feels smaller. I think the predominant difference is actually the width. When you're looking at the passenger seat and where your passenger sits when they're in the car with you in the Sport Turismo, you're like, are you okay over there? Like, they feel far away, it's such a wide cabin. The transmission tunnel as well feels thick and chunky and you've got this sort of sweeping elevated control panel that goes up towards the dash. And just as I said earlier, when you're in that car, just sitting in it is a great sense of occasion. Now, when you compare these two cars, we've got this ivory light colored interior. Granted, headliner in this is black, but they're both of the extended Alcantara. They both have the panoramic sunroof. So there's all of these features that if you were to write it down on paper, they're like the same car. But it's amazing how when you combine these components into one package, they come from different engineering teams with their own unique approaches to how they believe the performance variants of their more practical cars should be. And it's fascinating to have the opportunity to jump into them back to back. To summarize for me, I think it's all down to luxury, I really do. They're both incredibly capable, both four-wheel drive, practical as they come, four doors, lots of space, big boots, but the Porsche delivers luxury on a level that is just above this car. We have to remember that this is, you know, quite, a, this is like a four-year-old car in comparison to the Panamera. Uh, and the interface is starting to feel a little bit dated. It's something that you wouldn't really think about until you jump into a modern car. Porsches do interiors to such a high standard that jumping in the back-to-back, -back, you are aware that there is a little bit of plasticiness going on about this, and there's a lot more of the analog feel about it than then there is in the Porsche. Having said that, the environment in which to sit and absolutely smash miles, this is so awesome. I've got to say as well, the driving positions are unbelievably similar. There is one thing which I prefer about the Porsche and that you can just drop the rear of 
the seat down just a tad so basically your bum sits lower and for a slightly snugger more performance orientated driving position that's what I prefer uh, but this is pretty much spot on now interestingly if you watch this channel regularly you'll know that I class myself I guess as somewhat of a gearbox snob what I mean by that is I'd either a manual gearbox or a dual clutch gearbox like the one found in the Porsche. The gearbox in this, even though this is also an 8-speed, uh, this is a more conventional automatic. Now, this might be the first time that I've ever said this because it's one of the reasons I kind of have never gelled with the Aventador is because the gearbox is a little bit sloppy unless you're really on it. Interestingly, when you're on it in this, the way that it slams home a gear just delivers that just another sense of connection that yes you have pulled that paddle and it slammed in the next gear the gearbox in the Porsche while it is definitely superior the way it delivers it is so seamless that it's basically an audible tone change you, you, you sort of obviously are aware that it's initiated that shift but the way that this does it there's a nice tap in the listen to that there's a nice tap in the back that just just there it just gives you a nice little nudge to say yes sir you have initiated the shift oh it's great <laughs> I know which one I would have uh, as absolutely luxurious as it is to be within the confines of that luxurious cave from Porsche for my sporty practical car I'm still finding this to tick more boxes than the Porsche from a sense of occasion, right? To sit in, to amble and to be in, the Porsche takes it. It is a more beautiful environment uh, and it feels a lot more modern and up to date as it should. But from a driving interaction, I love this thing. It's so good. Comments below. I want to know what you guys think. How would you separate these two cars what would you say is the sort of thing that differentiates them the most is what i've said what you expected or did you expect the turbo version of this car to eat the rs6 alive i wasn't sure either but i wanted to bring it to you firsthand hopping in these two cars back to back there's one thing guys the algorithm on youtube is a funny thing these days and i've had lots of people emailing me and putting in messages that they haven't had alerts when new videos have gone live so if you like the content please if you go to the channel next to the subscribe button is a little bell if you click that you'll get alerts of when the new videos go live so if you like the content please subscribe if you haven't that would be amazing and if you are an existing subscriber hit that bell and you'll be first to know when brand new content goes live as always guys thanks for watching and i shall see you very soon ciao